Liberal government showered $40 million on that tiny group of New Zealanders who plan to invest in Meridian. Things continued, sir, to go downhill badly for young Kiwi first home buyers. The price of housing has gone up even more. The Real Estate, of New Zealand, uh, Real Estate Institute of New Zealand reports Auckland house prices went up 14% in the last 12 months. The announcement by the Reserve Bank of uh, loan-to-value ratio limits on mortgage lending without any kind of exemption for first-home buyers is a kick in the guts for first-home buyers because that government on that side of the House mishandled their negotiations with the Reserve Bank and failed to an agree to agree an exemption for first-home buyers. And now this bill today, sir, in the House for its second reading, the centrepiece of the government's housing policy, a timid, flawed, badly thought through bill that will surely fail to meet its objectives. We have in this National Party government, sir, a government that won't think twice about bailing out the insurance companies, about bailing out South Canterbury Finance, a government that at the drop of a hat will rewrite this country's laws and at the behest of Warner Brothers, of Sky City, of Anadarko, a government that will shower taxpayer largesse, sir, on Rio Tinto, on, tax pay, on uh, showering taxpayer largesse on investors in its botched privatisation of our country's, energy, uh, our country's energy companies. They will do all that, but they won't pull their fingers out to do something serious for first home buyers. The public knows it, the media knows it, they're floundering around and Nick Smith is the minister who's been delegated to give the appearance of doing something about the country's housing crisis. Well, sir, people see through it. This bill, this timid, flawed bit of, of draft legislation is all they've got and it simply won't cut the mustard. What is our attitude to this bill on the Labour benches? Well, frankly, sir, we are underwhelmed by it. There's nothing wrong in principle with the idea of special housing areas. There's nothing wrong with the idea of fast-track consenting. We have a housing affordability crisis. It requires bold, extraordinary measures. But this, sir, falls a long way short of what is required. It would be nice if the government approached the housing crisis with boldness with a determination to tackle the fundamental, intractable, complex array of problems that underlie the housing affordability crisis. But this bill is all they've got, and frankly, it amounts to tinkering. That's all it is. Kiwi Saver and Welcome Home Loans. I'm really glad the Minister mentioned that. I'm really glad he mentioned it. The New Zealand Herald devoted an entire editorial to describing that minister's announcement on Kiwi Saver and Welcome Home Loans and described it as, in, as insipid as it is ill-directed. That's what the country's biggest newspaper had to say about Nick Smith's latest housing policy announcement. The weird irony of this whole bill, sir, is that um, it's the centrepiece of the government's response to the housing crisis, but it, they wouldn't even have to be wasting the House's time with this bill if they hadn't made some serious errors of judgment earlier. Um, what the government, the, the, the bill quite rightly sets out to bring in new greenfields land into Auckland, right? There's no problem with that. It attempts to fast track consenting to speed up the construction of houses. Fine, there's no problem with that. But if they hadn't changed the law, if Nick Smith hadn't changed the law in 2009 to, um, to prevent uh, new plans having legal weight from notification, they would never have had to do this. If, if, the, if the national government had acceded to Auckland Council's request to fast track the Auckland Unitary Plan and allow it to have legal weight upon notification, they would never have had to bring this bill to the House, which simply cherry picks some aspects of the Unitary Plan. If they had allowed the, the Unitary Plan to be fast tracked, that would have been much better, sir, because it has a raft of other housing affordability measures that would have been much more useful than this bill. There is no doubt, sir, and I want to put to, put to rest any suggestion by the Minister in his last speech 
that this party doesn't accept that land supply is a problem in Auckland. It's clearly not a problem in Tauranga and other regional centres that suffer extreme housing unaffordability. But for, for the sake of this argument, sir, let's be very clear and put it on the record. There is no doubt the data makes it crystal clear that constraints on land supply in Auckland and the failure and the failure to intensify is behind an increase in the, in the value and the price of land that has flowed on that has flowed on to the price of housing. But land supply is only one factor in the housing crisis, and the National Party have a fixation with it. It's, they, their, their idea is that they can just bring in extra Greenfields land that will solve the problem. And that is the intellectual flaw underlying this bill, sir. The price of housing is determined by an interaction between the supply and the demand for land, sir. And this government refuses, refuses to consider a capital gains tax that would crack down on land speculation and, and residential property speculation and take the steam out of the, of the speculative pressures that are driving up uh, house prices in Auckland. They refuse to consider uh, the idea of putting limits on offshore speculators that, that see uh, overseas property speculators outbidding Kiwi first home buyers at Auckland property auctions. They refuse to stand beside first home buyers. National Party backs property speculators every time. The government's doing nothing substantial about tackling the extreme low productivity that we have in the construction industry, sir, the lack of scale, the lack of competition, entrenched problems that mean that the construction and building industry in this country has some of the lowest productivity in the OECD, and they only have weasel words to say about this. They have a dinosaur mentality reflected in this bill that says that the, the, the problem causing housing unaffordability is planning laws and regulations. And their only response is to say, let's deregulate, let's get rid of planning rules, sir. But simply by bringing in a, um, some extra Greenfields land, in itself a perfectly sensible idea, will not, given the complex and intractable forces that are making Auckland housing prices so prohibitively expensive for Kiwi first-home buyers, it will not in itself result in any more affordable housing. And one submitter after another, including the Todd Property, including the Property Council, the Salvation Army, the Auckland Council and the Tauranga and Waikato Councils all came to the Select Committee and said this bill on its own will not result in the building of any more affordable housing. All of those submitters, highly credible, involved submitters, came to the Select Committee and said this bill will not result in one more affordable house being built. Now, the premise of this bill is that if you open up more Greenfields land and allow property developers to build some, land, some new houses, no matter what the cost of those houses, that somehow that will reduce the cost of housing in Auckland. And that, sir, is fairy tale economics that Nick Smith is engaging in. That is the premise of this bill that if you build some more houses, no matter how expensive they are, on the fringes of Auckland, that that will make houses in Auckland more affordable. Well, Minister, that is a fairy tale, and it is a lie that underlies this bill. But, Mr Speaker, I want to comment briefly on the override clauses in this bill that are undemocratic, they are unnecessary, they make a mockery of the fact that this bill is called the Special Housing Areas and Housing Accords Bill. How can a council in good faith negotiate an accord with central government when they know, sitting across the table from the government, that this bill gives the government the power to do whatever it wants, no matter what the council says or believes? It is a mockery, it is undemocratic, sir, and it shouldn't be in this bill. Finally, I want to I note, sir, that this bill weakens the protections of certain parts of our country, including the Waitakere Ranges, that, are, that currently are protected by the Waitakere Ranges Heritage Area Act. That gives that act primacy over other local or district plans, sir. This bill dilutes those protections, requiring only for decision makers to have regard to those objectives in the bill. That is a substantial dilution of the protection that those special areas currently have, and I think that's a real shame. Sir, this bill is insipid, it is ill-directed, just like the New Zealand Herald said about 
Nick Smith's other housing policies. It is timid, poorly thought through, and it will not meet its objectives. Very good. I call uh, the Senator Sam Lutowinger. Mr Speaker, it's a, it's a pleasure to speak on this, the um, Housing Accords Special Housing Areas Bill. And may I, sir, first acknowledge um, the Minister, the Honourable Dr.